Honourable Member for Kootenay, Columbia. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am pleased to rise to speak on this motion, as the climate crisis is the greatest challenge of our time. We must recognize it as an emergency and accept that we have an imperative to act. The most recent report by the International Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change says we have about 11 years to dramatically reduce fossil fuel consumption or face catastrophic climate change. A recent report commissioned by Environment and Climate Change Canada found Canada is warming at twice the global average. Another recent report found one million species of plants and animals around the world are at risk. And one of the reasons is climate change. We heard from some excellent witnesses this afternoon at the Environment Committee on this really important but distressing topic. It is clear that we are facing an urgent ecological crisis. For too long, governments and corporations have delayed taking meaningful action on climate change, and now we find ourselves with the floods and fires at our door. And we have a moral responsibility to take rapid, ambitious action that will set us down the path for a more sustainable and equitable future. This spring, many students in my riding of Kootenai, Columbia, have participated in school strikes as part of the global movement started by 16-year-old Swedish climate activist Greta Thunberg. At the World Economic Forum, Ms. Thunberg said, I often hear adults say, we need to give the next generation hope, but I don't want your hope. I want you to panic. I want you to feel the fear I do every day, and I want you to act. I want you to behave, behave like our house is on fire, because it is. I know in my writing, many young people share this fear for the future. I have received passionate letters from grade five and six Tunaha students worried about polar bears and the environment. My granddaughter Lalita, who is graduating high school this month, at times worries if her generation will have a future at all. In addition to these fears, I've also heard from young people that they are confused and frustrated about the lack of action to address climate change. They feel let down by adults who have ignored the problem for decades. I recently attended a panel on climate change at Selmo Elementary School where, where two students played an original song, part of which goes like this. Why can't we just do it right, change the way we live our lives? People always say we're fine. Why can't they just see the signs? It's not just young people who is recognizing there is an urgent need to act. Local governments are on the front lines and recognize the need to make our communities more resilient to a claim changing climate. Many local governments have already had discussions on the climate emergency, but we need all levels of government to recognize the scale of the problem and commit to acting collaboratively. In my writing of Kootenai, Columbia, Nelson City Councillor Rick Lautenberg established the Climate Leadership Caucus to join councillors and mayors across the country together to advance climate change mitigation and adaptation efforts at the municipal level. While there are many solutions, that can be implemented by local governments. From waste to transportation, municipalities often lack adequate funding to do so. It is critical the federal government work with municipal partners so that they have the capacity to be climate leaders. And I want to thank Rick for his leadership. He is truly making a difference in convincing mayors and councillors across the country that everyone must play a part in fighting the climate change war. Also in my writing of Kootenai, Columbia, the Regional District of Central Kootenai has recognized the urgent need for action and collaboration on climate change. The RDCK is a collection of mayors and rural representatives who come together around important issues. Recently, they put forward a motion recognizing that climate change is an urgent reality requiring rapid decarbonization of energy and that preparing for increased resilience and adaptability, adaptability is critical. I went on to say that the RDCK recognizes that the world is in a global state of climate crisis and requires an imperative for all orders of government to undertake rapid and far-reaching changes to building, construction, energy systems, land use, and transportation. So while the Liberal government has brought this motion to recognize climate change as an emergency, over the course of this parliament, they have failed to treat it as such. The Liberal Climate Change Plan shelters the biggest polluters and fails to meet even Stephen Harper's weak targets. Earlier this month, the Liberal member for Beaches East York tabled a private member's bill that acknowledges the Liberals' targets are not enough. The member stated, 
Greater ambition is now required to meet our national, intergenerational, and our moral obligations. Science demands greater action. Recent media reports suggest the Minister of Environment and Climate Change has said the upcoming election is a chance to toughen Canada's climate change targets. And while I welcome more ambitious GHG targets, the government has had the chance for nearly four years to adopt them. Further, the government has taken actions over the course of this parliament that actively hinder effective climate action, such as the continued subsidization of the fossil fuel industry. This spring, the Commissioner of the Environment and Sustainable Development found the government had failed to do a fulsome inventory of fossil fuel subsidies and did not consider long-term environmental and social impacts on an equal basis with economic factors in evaluating subsidies. The NDP is calling to immediately end all fossil fuel subsidies so we can focus investment on renewable energy, public transit, and energy efficiency, as well as ensuring a just transition for affected workers and communities. While today we are debating the Liberals' motion to declare climate change an emergency, tomorrow the government will quite likely announce its approval of the Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion, despite the National Energy Board's failure to consider the project's climate change impacts. This is not climate leadership, quite frankly, it's climate hypocrisy. It is unconscionable that the Liberal government spent $4.5 billion of taxpayers' money on an old pipeline with plans for expansion at a time when we need to get serious about a rapid transition off of fossil fuels. This bailout was a bad investment for Canadians and the government should not pour more money into this project. Earlier this month, the Honourable David Anderson, a former federal Liberal Minister of the Environment, wrote to the members of Cabinet arguing that there is no economic justification for the project, saying building a new pipeline will not change the market. Instead of spending taxpayer money on pipeline expansion in the face of a climate emergency, we need a bold plan that reduces emissions while creating sustainable jobs for workers. The NDP's power to change a new deal for climate action and good jobs is a plan to do just that by investing in priorities like renewable energy, public transit, energy efficiency, and research and development. The United Steelworkers have said that this plan protects the planet and the jobs, and I encourage all parties to have a close look. As a Vice Chair on the Standing Committee on Environment and Sustainable Development, I am also pleased the Committee tabled two reports this spring, one entitled Clean Growth and Climate Change, How Canada Can Lead Internationally, along with a second report on forestry, agriculture and waste, with a total of 34 recommendations on how the government can and must do better in addressing climate change. Instead of par partisan bickering over carbon pricing, we need all parties to agree to work together on implementing comprehensive solutions. I look forward to reviewing the Conservatives' environment plan this week, and I hope it will acknowledge the serious imperative we have to act on climate change. One of the largest motivators I had to run to become a member of this House was the gutting of environmental regulations by the Harper government and their inaction on climate change. I sincerely hope the Conservatives realize that it is time for a new path forward. It is critical that fighting climate change must become a non-political, non-partisan issue. With increasingly urgent warnings from experts and more frequent and severe extreme weather events, it is clear that climate change is no longer a distant threat and that the cost of inaction is too great. I look forward to engaging with my constituents this summer in a series of town halls regarding climate change, as I know that addressing this challenge will require everyone getting on board. We must accept that climate change is an emergency for our planet and begin to act with a sense of urgency. Our children and our grandchildren deserve no less. Thank you, Madam Speaker.